Hello and welcome back to Polycutes. This is going to be, I guess, part two of the retopo that we're doing. And I'm going to jump straight onto the hands because they're probably the most fiddly. Everything else in here, well, I say everything else except for the teeth. The teeth are going to be uh, kind of annoying. But yeah, aside from that, the hands, uh, the hands are a bit of an annoying area. So uh, I'm going to keep it in the same layer as the uh, the body for now, but Let's just kind of go straight to it and yeah, make sure I still have symmetry enabled. Although even if you don't, it's fine because you can just reapply it afterwards. Uh, yeah, so let's just kind of do this and yeah, I, I'm just going to lay down some strokes uh, first of all, just for the, uh, the fingers and kind of want the angles to be sort of correct. Uh, I mean that's not amazing but that'll do for now and let's just draw that down there and these segments will go with uh, six should be okay so just hit enter and there's that and the one thing that I do kind of try to kind of keep with these fingers is um, like for example if it's six segments I want this sort of line to be here like there's one edge that goes down the middle of the top and ooh, come on now and one edge to go down the middle of the bottom which means you know you'll get one on the side and then you should have another uh, on the middle of the other side um, so that's kind of what I pay attention to uh, the most but um, yeah we'll see how that kind of works out in the end uh, and now when it comes to fingers you could uh, if you wanted to sort of uh, spend time kind of modeling in whatever it is that you want on the first one and then uh, if you were to just let's say grab all of these faces uh, and if it's an isolated thing like if it's not connected to anything else if you just tap twice it will select basically that whole thing uh, and then if my view were to stop going crazy uh, if you use the clone uh, it will create a new layer but that's fine you can kind of merge it in afterwards then just you know basically try and like uh, attach it to the other finger. Uh, it kind of depends on how your character set up and if, you know, if that shape will fit. You'll probably have to go in afterwards and do some little tweaks. I'm not sure if I mentioned it in my last video or not, uh, because sort of as always, I kind of, I had one idea for how that video should be. And then uh, it just, it just ended up being something else sort of completely. Like I wanted to do a kind of step-by-step -step, real time um, explanation of, of the whole thing, but it ended up being something like two and a half hours or th three hours long. So that's why it's a, it's a little bit strange. Like I speed through some things, but you still see um, some odd kind of choices uh, as in like the video will just pause, but I'll still be doing nothing, if that makes sense. Like as in like the video will be skipping through, but nothing will be happening on screen. It's because it's probably at a point where I'm trying to explain something, but then uh, when it comes to editing, I just I had to just take so much of it out. So yeah, whoops, a daisy. So anyway, I've just added in some cuts here uh, for where these joints uh, are gonna be, and I kind of have a loose guide anyway of where they are on the uh, the sculpt. But uh, I don't agree actually with their placement too much now that I think about it. Uh, well, that's fine. Uh, and f for the fingers, uh, the topology and like the whole bending and stuff. Uh, you can do like the exact same thing as what we did with the elbow. Uh, kind of just depends, really. Um, I probably will. Uh, yeah, in fact, I think I will. So, uh, actually, I what I'm going to do. Rather than do that, I'll split the whole thing, but then I'll just weld. Uh, looks like something's gone. Yeah, something's gone a bit wrong here. Uh, okay, yeah, there's no point in doing like an undo because I don't know at what point that happened. So uh, I'll just add in a split here. And if I go to delete edges, it will just remove that triangle piece. So back to where we were. Uh, 
And what I'm probably going to do actually is I'll introduce uh, a cut along here, um, which I probably should have done earlier actually, because it's going to stop because of these things. Um, yeah, didn't really think that one through. So let's actually just go back a bit. And uh, yeah, I'll run a, a ring loop through there. So it just rounds it up a bit. And yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, so now we need, need to... Actually, I lied about losing all of it. We are going to lose all of it. Okay, let's put this back to the way it was. I'll just speed through that. So now we have created this uh, this mid loop. So let's actually make sure that that's like in the center there. That should be fine. Uh, okay, actually, with this little finger, I think I, I, I realized what my mistake was. It's sort of rotated, uh, which I didn't take into account. So uh, what I'm actually going to do is get rid of it. And let's just grab, say, uh, not this guy, because he's also a little messed up. So we'll grab the first one. And we'll just clone him. Him or her, I don't know. Not so sure what gender fingers are. Maybe they're neutral. Uh, yeah, so I'd rotated it. Oops, I'd rotated it. Um, what is going on here? There we go. I'd rotated it uh, along one axis, but it needed actually like that sort of rotation as well, which I uh, kind of forgot about. I should probably have done the same with those other ones, but maybe they're good enough. probably okay got a couple of weird things going on but let's just uh, let's merge these together for now so uh, you can use this to select all the faces of the layer so selected all of these and then select the body and uh, move selected faces to the current layer so if you just do this for all of them so bada bing bada boom and now yeah there shouldn't be anything in these layers so we can get rid of them Okay, pretty cool. So now we just need to uh, let's just weld up these fingers so that they are actually. Uh, oops. When I say weld, I don't literally mean weld. Um, we're going to do like this to attach them together. So just create like a bit of geometry between them. Ah, okay, yeah. I've done something a little bit wrong here. The rotation of this finger is actually is completely wrong. Uh, but rather than going back now and cloning it, um, I'll just so this is actually the midpoint. So that would connect with that, and then this would connect with that. And let's see if we can just cheat this a little bit. So let's select. Uh, let's use that. Select vertices. Probably want to make sure that ignore back faces is off when you select things. Let's try that again. So now each one of these kind of should be the same. So you have two faces in the join, two faces join, two faces join, two faces join. So if that isn't happening with you, then um, something's gone a bit wrong. Uh, so you know these should all be the same. Uh, let's just tidy it up a little bit more. Okay, so that's the fingers done. Thumb is pretty much the same thing.
Ah, okay. Yeah, there was uh, something I did there that um, reminded me of something that I've actually completely forgotten about. So, you know, I had this sort of midpoint that was running through all of these fingers. And so the midpoint for the thumb will kind of be here, which means I want this loop ideally um, to kind of also come into contact with this loop. And so what I've done here um, is basically no good. So let's just get rid of Oops, switch this back to that. Just get rid of some of this. Uh, probably don't need to get rid of that much, but it's okay. So if you think about where this loop will be, uh, it's going to follow these quads here. And so it is just a case of trying to kind of rearrange these. Uh, probably need to move these ones out of the way. So that they kind of wrap around. Um, so I'll just do like a quick if it will let me. So yeah, it's going to eventually, we're going to split it here so you can see just how much sort of room we have to work with. So now we have that center line uh, running all throughout the hand, which, uh, which is just kind of handy, helps sort of lay down where things should be. Uh, just while I'm here, I'll probably want to give myself another edge loop across here. Um, the only thing is, obviously, we're coming to a point where there's going to be sort of lots of these faces coming out, and we don't have many to connect to the arm. Uh, so that's, you know, it's always something to consider, but you don't necessarily have to sacrifice too much in the hand. Uh, there are kind of some ways to sort of make it fit a lot. We've sort of already covered uh, on the body, but um, essentially my advice is just not to worry about it too much. Uh, just kind of, you know, model the hand how you want to model the hand and then worry about connecting it afterwards. So yeah, as I was saying, uh, you know, if we were to just keep following all of this up, we've got about sort of three edges here to kind of work with. Uh, and there's like maybe 10 or so edges here that we have to sort of connect through. So, I mean, that's just, that's just not happening. Um, so you kind of have to come up with some way to sort of condense that in some way or another. And for me, uh, it's usually sort of a little bit of trial and error. Like I roughly know what it is I'm doing, you know, which I'm sure is a great reassurance to anyone watching. Uh, but I kind of, I just let the polygons kind of tell me what to do. Like once I put in uh, like the loops that I want, then I kind of just fill it in the only way that it will let me, you know, if that makes sense. So anyway, let's just see what we can do here. Uh, so if you were to do something like that, for example, uh, we've taken sort of two, turned it into one. Uh, and if we were to keep sort of following that, then we'd end up with about five edges into three, you know, which is a little bit easier to work with. Uh, so let's just kind of keep doing something like that. Yeah, okay, so it looks like we almost kind of made it, but uh, not quite. So we've got three faces, uh, well, three edges here that will sort of come into one. Um, so I'll keep sort of having to play around with this. Maybe there's some other thing we can do somewhere, or just kind of have to uh, do something here that hopefully wouldn't mess up too much. We might actually be able to get away with adding in an extra loop here. Uh, we might even want one here anyway because of the wrist. Uh, so maybe that will give us all we need to kind of work with inside here.
Yeah, something like that should be okay. Uh, okay, so now we only need to fill in the palm and then we're good. Uh, yeah, I've just noticed at some point something went very wrong for the s symmetry. Uh, and that's easy enough to fix just with the uh, s symmetry button. But again, if you have any areas like on, on your mesh where there's like a sort of these thin kind of areas, uh, just keep an eye on those for when you do actually do this symmetry button. Um, everything seems to be right there because, yeah, they can get a little weird. Uh, but I think we seem to be okay. And yeah, it's fixed. It's fixed that hand, which is always good. So yeah, anyway, carry on. Uh, one thing I am going to do here to sort of help me out a little bit, rather than just sort of try and do a mishmash of polygons that'll fit in, uh, similar to what I was saying in the previous video about uh, ring loops, I know that I have one that's going around like all of here. So I'm just going to, you see, connect these up and we can add in obviously all of the edges we need, but at least now with this sort of laid right here, we know that this sort of loop is here. So uh, yeah, little things like that can kind of just help uh, fill in the space. Cause uh, as I was saying before, you kind of, you add in the geometry that you need and then just f fill in the rest wherever it lets you. So yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much the hand done. Uh, again, it's not like a super detailed hand. This, uh, you know, this character's hand is never sort of seen in like a first person view or anything like that. So fair enough. Um, but I think actually that is it for the body, like the entire body mesh. We'll need to move the legs down a little bit, but for now let's actually just, uh, we'll get rid of it and we'll move on to something else finally. So let's do some shoes. So new retopo layer shoes, and I do have some laces with this, but uh, again, we'll sort of treat those uh, separately. And again, make sure symmetry's on. And yeah, let's just uh, work out the best way to kind of do this. And let's start with actually, let's see if we can just do a stroke or something. Uh, And for this one, I'm not going to just lay down sort of one line and then specify a number of segments. Uh, although, I mean, that could be okay. In fact, maybe that is completely okay. I was going to say that we should do it manually just because I, well, I want to be able to line some things up. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, what does it matter? Uh, because again, kind of treat this the same way that I will treat like anything. I'll kind of just lay down... Uh, some areas that uh, I think are of like the most importance. Uh, and I'm in also graphic mode still, so I'll just come out of that. Uh, I have noticed as well, uh, I seem to be uh, subconsciously f following the uh, topology of, of uh, these initial kind of stroke polygons that we laid down. Uh, I don't mean to do that. In fact, I'm not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to just lay down what I need and then work the rest with me, but uh, it's not super dense. So, you know, I'm not so worried about it. You may have noticed, uh, like I was trying to keep these things kind of um, symmetrical on sort of either side. So, you know, making sure that these lines will kind of match up with one another. And I'll work on like one side, like I connected these two faces and then went to the other side and connected those two. Uh, it's just to make like the whole process kind of a bit simpler. I mean, for the most part, shoes like t topologically speaking, is that a word? Topologically? I don't know. Uh, they're kind of the same, so you know there's no point in sort of making your life harder by having sort of more edges over here than over than on the other side. So uh, yeah, something to kind of keep in mind when you're doing these sorts of objects.
And so again, like I was saying with the hand, like this edge here, uh, it looks like if I were to let it sort of export itself, it might choose this orientation. Um, but it makes much more sense uh, for me to actually do something like this, so it fits with the shape a little bit better. Uh, also, one other little thing, just before I forget, obviously when we made the, like this area here of the polygons, uh, we had to keep our stroke line a little bit higher than the edge because you have to draw that sort of final green line through it. Uh, if you can't remember what I mean, it was, uh, it was just very quickly. So if I draw that stroke line and then that stroke line, the reason that it's sort of slightly above is this other green line has to connect through. Uh, if it doesn't connect through, like if it's just here or something, uh, then it won't actually form your edges. Um, so let's get rid of that. And so what this means is that actually these edges that we have here aren't exactly, you know, at the bottom. And so one sort of easy way to kind of uh, fix that is if you just select, let's say, all of the verts. So we'll go to vertices. Uh, make sure ignore back facing is... Uh, enabled mine happens to be and then just transform them and now you can just move them down and this also helps if uh, you know if you have a whole bunch of rows of stuff that is slightly uh, let me actually go back a bit so if I've been like moving some things down or whatever and you know it's, nothing's entirely sort of straight you can just uh, select everything go to transform and just scale it first so keep doing a couple scales and you know everything will be kind of reset to the same level now you can just move this down and so that's there for the underside of the shoe uh, there is this R fill tool uh, which you find in the menu um, which works wonders like it just it tries to create quads where it can um, and fortunately you know this mesh uh, has meant that we have sort of equal amounts of uh, polygons on either side I'm guessing it's because we did something like uh, 24 uh, polygons with our initial stroke uh, so it's just sort of worked out beautifully um, but even if yours hasn't it's you know it's fine this is the underside so long as you have some straight lines so it can sort of animate okay um, then everything should be okay although saying that mine doesn't seem to want to work okay let's disable symmetry wow maybe it's creating it on the other side no. Uh, that's a little bit weird. Let's um, troubleshoot this stuff for some reason. Uh, so let's invert the mirror. Do that. Turn invert mirror back off. Not that it really matters too much. Uh, so let's just try again. Uh, let's turn symmetry off. No. Oh. Ah, uh, wait, is it because I'm in this mode? No? So ignore what I said, basically, about the Apple tool. Let's just make this manually. Uh, so now we'll just move on to the laces, and for now, even though they will be part of the shoes, I'm just going to... Uh, um, maybe they won't. Either way, uh, they're going to be in their own layer, just to make life a little bit easier. And yeah, for this 
pretty much, I mean, they're an awkward shape, so it's just going to be strokes and uh, probably require a little bit of touch up. Something kind of strange going on here. Uh, maybe it's to do with like the size of this piece being too small, but if I were to draw like this green stroke around here, when I let go, it tries to sort of do some interpolation or, or something. Uh, I don't really know what to do about that, but uh, if you were to draw sort of, yeah, see, it's straightening it out. I don't know why. If you draw kind of each piece uh, bit by bit, then you can uh, get around it that way annoying but it is what it is okay yeah so some of this will go a bit wrong but that's fine we'll uh, fix it up at the end so I'll just get through these These two laces that I have sort of merged on top, uh, I'm actually going to treat these a little bit differently. Um, I, I don't think I have to make a new layer for this, but I will anyway. Uh, I'm basically going to use uh, like a shell feature. So first of all, let's just build uh, like a flat sort of edge face across the tops of all of these. Oh, and obviously, uh, because this is kind of one mesh, uh, it's not like I can put down some points and have it come, you know, with the uh, the lace underneath. Uh, you could, if you want, place it somewhere like here and then grab the verts and push them down. Uh, but what I'll probably do is actually just continue this over this way so it just bypasses all of that, uh, which is fine there. So we're going to select all of the faces and then what we're going to do is a shell and I don't know which way we want to go don't want to go that way so we'll probably just go that way should be fine so let's come out of that and if you have a selection just control D so now okay yeah just need to tweak these a little bit Basically, because I have, you know, the auto snapping uh, on, which is on by default, so you don't have to worry. If I were to just move these points just a little bit, it is, it's going to snap them to the mesh, or rather to the closest point. Okay, so... That'll probably do for that. Uh, let's grab our laces, select everything in that layer, move it into laces. Now we can delete that one. So now we have uh, the shoes done. And I have, you may have noticed, like I've followed this um, geometry kind of inside a bit. Uh, and that's just to make sure that, uh, you know, nothing really s sticks out or anything, that we can't see it. Um, so that's. That's fine, that'll do. Uh, so yeah, now we just need to fix these legs up a bit. So let's come back to the body. And... Oh, wait, where my shoes gone? There they are. So let's... Let's just continue this down a bit. And I might actually try the extrude tool here. It often goes crazy for me, but we'll see.
Yeah, okay, that should be fine. So we've got most of that done. Uh, and you are going to hate me, but I'm going to have to end it there. So we'll have to do the other bits in part three. So we will continue with uh, all of the little proppy bits uh, in the next part, which I guess will be part three. So yeah, I will see you in that one. <laughs>